Hey guys, I had a couple requests to do a bluffing tips video, primarily when it comes to winning competitions, and another request to do a skilling video. But since bluffing and skilling are two different things, I'm going to do skilling in a separate video because otherwise it'll just be a really long video and they're completely kind of separate processes anyway. Uh, first, I just want to say that my heart and thoughts really go out to everyone affected by Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma this past weekend. Irma especially hit close to home for me because even though I live a thousand miles away, I have immediate family in Central Florida. And the her the core of Irma went right through their town around 1 a.m. Monday morning. Thankfully, my family, they're all okay. Their homes just suffer minimal damage, but they got really lucky because I've been seeing pictures of the damage done to their city as well as other cities that were hit. And to say it's not pretty is just, a, it's a really big understatement because the damage done was just catastrophic in a lot of places. But my thoughts, they're with everybody who either live in the affected areas or who have loved ones who do. So just continue to stay safe and, you know, hope we'll all pull through this. But let's go ahead and get started. I'll quickly go over the requirements for BLUP, but since this will mostly just contain tips, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about, like, which skills you gain from the different rides, from the different competitions, and I'm going to hope that you already know what I mean if I refer to secondary skills or primary skills because otherwise just if I included all of that in this particular video it's just going to be a really long video. So like I said this will mostly be on like tips for winning competitions but First, I will go over just how to blup real quick. So this is a horse that is already blupped. If you click on his genetics tab, it says that he's 100 blup. The three requirements for blup are that it needs to be at least 10 years old. So it can be 10 years old or older. Although there is a VIP perk that lets you blup before 10 as long as you have that perk selected and you have a next pack. The second requirement is that the top three skills need bolded. Now, if this little pop-up thing just says training out of three, training is a bit misleading because it kind of sounds like you just need the tr three tr top three training bars finished. That's not the case. You need to have the skills bolded. And just to know what the top three skills are, you can either look at the training bars, like if the if you haven't already trained those top three skills, there's going to be a little arrow next to it that notes that this is a top three skill, but this is still kind of a relatively new feature. Um, I think we've only had that for about like a year or something. So I always just click on the genetics tab and look for the three highest numbers here. For this horse in particular, those three skills that are the highest are speed, dressage, and jumping. And they are bolded. I've gained all skills possible from those because those skills are in a darker text compared to like stamina. It's not bolded, whereas speed is bolded. And the three things that you need to do to bold out your skills, you need to complete all the training for that skill. If you click on mountain rides, it shouldn't be able to gain any skills for mountain rides if that horse needs mountain rides done. Same for forest. It shouldn't have any skills left to gain from forest rides if it needs forest rides. And if we look at competitions now, because this horse has uh, speed dressage and jumping as his top three skills, I could just enter show jumping alone to bold out its skills from competitions. So if I hover over jumping, it has no more skills left to gain in speed dressage or jumping. So it's this is a completely bluffed horse. And the third requirement is that it needs to have at least 20 victories. And by victories, it does mean first place win. So you need just 20 first, weight, first place wins across the board. Doesn't matter if they're all in cross country or if they're in like uh, classical and Western, doesn't matter, just needs 20 first place wins. So that's how you know if a horse is bluffed. Now, this is my blup here. This is just kind of a horse I bred a while back and I figured I might as well go ahead, train it, blup it up. It's a crossbred. Um, it's G GP isn't even really that good anymore, but I'm going to show you one of two training methods I use to get wins on a horse when it comes to blupping. Now, just keep in mind that there are loads of different blup schedules and methods you can use. Then you can find a lot of them in the events form. If your events form has a blupping topic, I don't really follow schedules personally, but I, you know, it's kind of personal preference on how you do your blupping. Now, one pop popular method I do sometimes use is target training. Like this horse in particular has been target training. Target training is training up the secondary skills needed for competitions, leaving your primary skills low because if you leave the primary skill low, you can enter lower level competitions. So that's why this horse's top three skills are speed, dressage, and stamina. 
I trained him in speed and dressage, and that will allow me to enter either uh, low-level cutting competitions because uh, entering him in cutting would have just been easier. That would all, that's the only competition I would have to enter to bold him. Or because I can, uh, I have the VIP perk that lets me switch his specialties back and forth regardless of his age. I could just leave him in classical and enter him in trot, gallop, and show jumping because that gives me a bigger variety of competitions to enter. So that's target training. Just train up the two secondary skills, leave the primary skills low. Now for this particular horse, the method I'm going to use on him is a rookie training method, uh, which means that I'm going to keep his top three skills well, you want to keep all of his skills just under rookie level, but I'm going to especially train up his top three skills to just under rookie level, and hopefully I can get all of his wins in rookie level comps. It should make it easier to get his wins. I just, I like doing this particular method when I'm in a hurry because I have the VIP perk that lets me cancel boarding for, for my horses that I board in my EC, and that means that I can get all the mountain rides done because I have a mountain EC. I can get all those mountain rides done within a couple minutes as long as the skills stay under the rookie limit. And if I do get those mountain rides done, I can immediately cancel my stay, then board him in a forest DC and just continue along with the process. And I don't either have to waste extra aging points doing forest rides in a mountain EC or, you know, I don't have to wait until boarding is expired or whatever. Now, I know some players do like to hold off on rides. That way they don't accidentally increase the primary skill for a competition because then they'd have to enter higher level competitions. But I personally like to just get rides done and out of the way so I don't have to, so I don't end up forgetting about them and I have to like go back and redo them or something. But it's just personal preference. So what I'm going to do for him, I'm in my mountain EC. I'm going to train up hopefully get as much mountain rides done as I can. Now, what we want to do though first is look to see what the rookie limit is for the day. So click on the question mark here, go to the help center, click on the breeder's manual. Uh, we want section three, prepare us for the competition, section 3.3, .3, which is competitions. Scroll all the way to the bottom. We want to look for competitions for rookie horses. The limits for this are that your horse cannot have won more than 20 wins. That's obviously not a problem for this horse because we're trying to get those wins. And he can't have any skills whatsoever above 1160. If your horse has one single skill, like let's just say his speed goes to like 1161, he can no longer enter rookie competitions. So we're going to keep all of those under 1160. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to actually stop doing rides and training once at least one of his skills hits about, uh, I'll say 800 or so, because you want to be careful with this because obviously as soon as you start entering competitions, then your horse will also gain skills from competition. So even though the rookie limit is 1160, were I to go ahead and let's just say doing all rides will get his skills to 1160, um, that's not going to happen because his inborn skills aren't high enough for that. But let's just say that doing all mountain rides will get his speed skill to 1160. I think, okay, I'm good. I can just, you know, enter rookie competitions in like gallop or something and I'll be good to go. Well, that's not the case because as soon as I enter, after I enter one gallop competition, his speed skill is going to be over 1160. And then the rest of his competitions, I won't be able to enter in rookie comp. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do mountain rides um, and then I'm going to stop once he hits 800. So, and then I'll be back. All right, so my horse actually finished mountain rides and he ended up stopping at like 723 for a speed skill. So we're fine with that. We're still well under the rookie comp limit. If we click on his mountain rides, select a duration, he doesn't gain any more skills for mountain rides. So his mountain rides are completely finished, which means I'm going to cancel my stay. Obviously, if you don't have this perk, you can either just go ahead later on and do your other rides in this location. It'll just take you extra time to do that. Um, or you can just wait uh, until your boarding expires and then you can finish your rides later on. So then it won't take so long, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna cancel my stay. Let's go find a forest EC because mine was in a mountain. We're gonna choose this one has at least that tack. I don't, I don't really go around and look and start selecting, searching for ECs that have tack. If I have to buy it, I have to buy it. That one actually has some. We're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead. 
Um, his top skills, because they are, he's a crossbred, him in particular, we would really want to look to see what his top three skills are, because even though a purebred Spanish horse, if he was a purebred, purebred Spanish horse, his skills would be speed, dressage, and gallop. He's a crossbred, let's check to be sure. His top three skills looks like uh, speed, dressage, and gallop. That will be best for classical competitions, gallop in particular. I can get all of skills bullet just by entering gallop competitions alone. Let's specialize them in classical. Now, if we were to want to enter Western competitions with him, this EC offers English tack. So I'm going to tack him up with the English tack. I will show you this trick real quick. I think I've shown this on my free to run quest series, if not. Oh, you're going to get to see it again. So let's say I actually wanted to enter this horse in Western. Even if you did not have the VIP perk to change specialty, regardless of age, he's under five years old, so you can still freely change his specialty. He's tacked up in English right now. Oops, I wanted to enter him in Western competitions. Edit profile, select Western, and his tack will change to Western. Not a big deal. You don't have to worry about going and buying new tack and wasting what you already applied. Changing back to English, I have free whips because I'm VIP. I don't really focus all that much personally on applying loads of bonuses. Uh, some players do, some players don't. I'm one of those who don't because I can get a horse plucked without having to put on loads of bonus items and black market items and stuff. So his top three skills, like I said, speed, dressage, gallop, I could probably... I could either go ahead and start training now to get his skills up closer to the rookie limit, or I could do forest rides. Actually, what I'm going to do, just so I can try to get forest, out of the, forest rides out of the way, I'm going to start training up. Uh, I'm going to start doing his forest rides. So I'll be back once those are finished. All right. So I managed to completely finish forest rides. The bar is collapsed. If I click on forest, uh, he gains no more skills from it. So I managed to get that completely finished, still staying well under the rookie limit. Now, because I'm still quite a ways under it, um, I'm going to try and get dressage and gallop, whoops, up to like around 700 or something by training. And then I'll start entering competition. So I'm going to train up dressage and gallop to about 700 and then I'll be back to enter competitions. All right, I have his top three skills up to like 700 speed, dressage, gallop, all up around 700. I'm going to start entering my gallop competitions now to start building out his skills and I'll select rookie competitions. And even though these show as higher difficulty competitions, obviously, because I could have left gallop really low, my thing is that I like to train up to those top three skills to just under the rookie limit. Because if you think about it, um, the rookie limit for skills is you can't enter a rookie competition if you have more than 1160 skills currently in any one skill. So if I train, say, all his speed, dressage, gallop skills up to like 1159 and enter gallop competitions that are rookie competitions, he'll be at the top end of the range that's allowed in those competitions. Whereas if I target trained him, I trained up his speed and dressage as high as they go and try to enter really low level gallop competitions. Let's just say his speed and dressage skills will only get up to like, I don't know, 1500 each or something. And then I entered like 100 level gallop competitions. Let's just say theoretically. Now, there could be other competi other horses entering those competitions that have even higher speed and dressage skills. Because if we're over the rookie limit on any of those skills, I can't enter rookie comps at all. So I just, I like to just stick to rookie comps as much as possible and try to keep like to just under that because I know I'm, that I'm at the high end of the range and I'm not going against Horses that have like much higher secondary skills, even though they have like low enough primary skills to still enter the same competitions as me. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense a little bit, but we're going to keep entering competitions here until I get his comps bolded. I don't know if any of these are going to run in the meantime. They probably not, but I'll be back in a little bit. All right, now I can no longer gain skills uh, from competitions in Gallup. So I've doing competitions with him in regards to bowling is completely finished. Now, sometimes like if I'm in a hurry, obviously I'll start entering other competitions and then I'll fill those competitions with my own horses who won't beat him. So I'll look for comp for horses that, you know, have low health and morale because that does take 
you know, that will affect their competition placing. And I'll just make sure, though, that they have enough of the same primary skill to enter the competitions as him. And, you know, he'll be able to beat my own horses or whatever. So what I would do now is I'll finish training up his skills just a little bit so that they can, they're a little closer to that rookie limit. I want to be very careful right now because just like the littlest bit and you'll go over the limit and I don't want to do that because I've done that on more than one occasion and um, then once my skills are trained up to just under the limit a little bit more because like I said I've gained all skills possible in competitions from speed dressage and gallop so I don't have to worry anymore about uh, gaining too much from competitions I just have to worry about going over accidentally while I'm training him. So I'm going to finish training up a little bit and then I'll be back again. Okay, this is close as I can get training wise because otherwise if I did like even just a 30 minute training session in like speed, I'd gain 15 and then I would be over the rookie limit with that because my speed right now is 11.50. So the rest of my plan with this horse would be to uh, finish winning competitions with them because I'm still under that rookie limit. I'll try and enter some more rookie trot competitions, rookie show jump competitions, maybe some cutting competitions if I wanted to because um, I'm able to change a specialty if you can't. Uh, keep entering gallop competitions as well if you'd like even though you're not gaining skills from them anymore that's okay you're at the very top end of that rookie range with this horse and all three of those skills that are required for gallop competitions so he might have a better chance actually of winning the gallop rookie competitions as opposed to trot or show jumping just kind of try some out because at the same time you're not you know, it very much also depends on what other horses are entering. There might be horses with lower skills entering in trot or show jumping as opposed to gallop, but he's still fairly young. So I have time that I can enter some more competitions and I'll still have plenty of time left to train him before he hits 10. So I don't have to worry about wasting extra aging points. But otherwise, uh, the plan is just to get some more wins on him and then train up his three skills and just to finish building them out. So that's how I would go about doing like a rookie training method when it comes to winning competitions for blupping. This one's a little bit trickier because you have to, you know, really pay attention to those skills when you're training them so you don't accidentally go over the rookie level. The target training method is actually a heck of a lot easier just because you train up those two secondary skills as high as you can and, you know, you don't have to worry about going over any sort of limit. And that method, the target training one, does work very well on breeds like Thoroughbreds, the Cell Francais, and the KWPNs just because they have such good speed and dressage, those breeds, like Thoroughbreds in particular, they just, you know, if you have a high GP Thoroughbred, they do really well when you target train them and enter them into Thoroughbred competition. Some breeds it doesn't work so well on, like Gypsy Vanners, because that's such a competitive breed, unless you have a really high skilled Gypsy Vanner, um, I sometimes have a hard time entering or winning those competitions with them when I target train so that's why I kind of like to do like the rookie training method with a breed like a gypsy vanner but some of that just comes with experience knowing which breeds are more competitive and which ones aren't um, I hope this kind of kind of gave you some tips on winning competitions. Blupping to me, it's an easy topic, but it's kind of dense in some places just because there's so many methods you can use to do this. I still hope this gave you some extra tips on winning competitions when it comes to blupping your horses. So thank you for joining me today, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.